Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Jim Perry. I am the president of the New Jersey League of Municipalities, a committeeman from Hardwick, New Jersey. Joining me this morning are Janice Kovach, League of Municipalities first vice president and mayor of Clinton Town, Al Kelly, president of the New Jersey Urban Mayors Association, league president and mayor of Bridgeton, or should I say the fine. Uh, municipality of Bridgeton, uh, and Michael Venezia, the executive board member and mayor of Bloomfield. We're here today to address the road to local government recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. First, I want to thank all the frontline workers who continue to fight COVID-19. As we are all aware, of COVID-19 has affected every facet of life. New Jersey mayors have never faced the public health, the public safety, the threat to local businesses, the community social well being, and the local finance issues that we are facing this year and that we expect to be facing on into next year. Unlike any other emergency that our municipalities have faced, COVID 19 is different. In past, Emergencies tend to be natural disasters that place demands on our, on our resources. Manpower is spread thin responding to the emergency, assisting our residents and working around the clock on recovery efforts. Expenses are incurred in advance to limit our exposure, during to respond and after to clean up, restore and prevent future emergencies. COVID-19 has created a new dynamic in emergencies for municipalities unforeseen in our lifetimes, revenue loss. Since mid-March from the more than 1.2 million New Jersey residents have filed unemployment claims. The current public health emergency led to shuttering of businesses, construction, ports, and schools. As a result, local governments have experienced a record decline in revenue from permit and fees, licensing fees, parking fees, and ne nearly all other sort of resources. At the same time, local governments also face income losses due to declining returns on investments. Further, there is uncertainty surrounding property tax collection and state aid revenue as the state faces its own significant budget challenges. Regardless of these decreases in revenues, municipalities must continue to provide essential services, but as New Jersey begins to reopen from COVID-19, we're providing these services with less and face more uncertainty of how long we can continue to do so without any relief from the federal government or state legislative relief. Without any relief, local governments will be forced to account for these budget shortfalls whether it be through furloughing employees, eliminating community services and events or significant reductions in services. At this time, I'd like to invite the great mayor from uh, Bloomfield, uh, Mike Venezia Township and a league executive board member to provide some insight on the challenges facing municipalities. Mike, you have the floor. Thanks, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me on this call today. To get started, I have to say it's great to see multiple towns working together during such trying times, and we are all trying to figure out what to do next. It has certainly been a learning experience for all of us, but I'm glad that we're getting back on our feet. Bloomfield, like all other municipalities throughout the United States, have our own struggles with this pandemic. Since our municipal offices closed on March 16th until we reopened at the end of May, we stretched our health, public safety, and public works function to their limits. My administration has worked tirelessly to ensure the safety and response to our community since this pandemic has started, and we continue that work to this day. Steps that we took to protect the, our essential employees so that they could respond paid off, working from home, altering shifts to limit the amount of contact these employees had to be affected by this virus. Even during the worst of times, we as a township 
we're only down about five to 10 employees out of about 350. Our police, fire, and EMS never had to run short on a shift, and our health department was phenomenal. The significant cost over the, were over 400,000 just in equipment alone for PPEs, sanitizers, and more importantly, overtime, which is being addressed through FEMA, CARES Act, and CDBG grant funds. And we are extremely grateful for the response of our state and federal government. And thanks to Governor Murphy, our congressional delegation, and our county executive, Joe D. All this work and assistance, however, did not replace the financial impact of the loss of revenue now that we predict will occur in the fall with tax payments. We have lost roughly $3 million in total revenue from this pandemic. We have lost just short of a million dollars in revenue just from our parking utility alone. In fact, our analysis shows that 40% loss of revenues are equate to about $970,000. We still pay our employees maintaining our facilities as well as our debt payments, and we all know those don't go away. What concerns me the most, though, is the ability of our residents to pay their property taxes. In New Jersey, municipalities collect 100% of the schools and county tax obligations. For Bloomfield, that makes up about 63% of our tax collection. If the property taxpayer can't pay the township, the township still has to pay the school and counties 100% of their need. In New Jersey, unemployment has dramatically increased in three short months. And it's not hard to imagine the impact that our residents have their ability to pay. Bloomfield has done very well in past with tax collection, but if the percentage of our collections drop even 3% from the tip, our typical 98%, we lose over a million dollars. In fact, we have already seen indicators in the second quarter taxes when our rate dropped to 95%, a loss of over $800,000. With unemployment skyrocketing, I'm worried for my community come August or even concerning the November property tax payment. If revenue losses are not addressed, we can be looking at layoffs or furloughs. The layoffs could come at to roughly 5% of our workforce. We need the ability to respond to these loss of revenues and we need to do it quickly. The dramatic loss of revenue be, is beyond anyone's control and must be addressed. Not all municipalities are the same, but in Bloomfield, the impact is clear and the results of that loss will severely cripple our ability to maintain the health, safety, and welfare of our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, uh, Mayor. Um, at this time, I would uh, like to turn it over to uh, the great mayor of Bridgeton, Al Kelly. Uh, he's also a league past president and he is also uh, the current president of the Urban Mayors Association. And uh, he's also a good friend and has uh, been one of my mentors here at the league. And thank you for everything you've done, uh, Mayor Kelly, and the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Mayor Perry, and I appreciate your leadership and your guidance uh, as the president of our league. And I appreciate being on this call with my fellow uh, mayors. Uh, it, it's neat. Needless to say, we are in a extraordinary time as we had shared before. And our communities are facing unprecedented uh, revenue starvation that we need federal or state help to overcome the deficits that we are now uh, facing and that we anticipate to face. Um, let me just share for our listeners, Bridgeton is a town in southern New Jersey. We are an urban area, but we're surrounded by farmland in which many of our residents uh, in our city work on the farms surrounding the uh, city, and these are the farms that feed our community and feed our state and country. And so this pandemic has adversely affected, as we know, everyone in our state of New Jersey, but uh, even more so towns that are that are financially challenged. Let me just say it that way about Bridgeton. We are not one of the wealthy communities. We're a farm town, as I said, and we have uh, special needs. 
we need help from our federal and state legislatures and our state and federal leaders. We need that help so that we cannot uh, raise taxes enough to cover the deficits that we are facing this year and next year. There's no way that uh, we can uh, ask our residents and our property tax owners to cover that which we're losing this year. And so this federal government has to step in and help towns, uh, the towns in New Jersey, but especially towns such as mine who are financially challenged and we do not just have uh, the revenue and the tax base in order to uh, make up for the deficits that we are, are we're going to face. Is that it, Mayor Tell? Yes, for now, that, that's it. I, I have some ideas about solutions, but we'll move on and I'll share it with that later on. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your uh, comments. Um, next, I want to introduce uh, my right hand person uh, who I've gone to quite often. Uh, she is the first vice president here at the League of Municipalities. Um, and uh, she has been a great asset to myself uh, as I've been the president this year with all the issues we've gone through, as well as uh, her community. She's always done a fine job. Uh, Mayor Clinton Town, um, First Vice President May uh, Mayor Janice Kovach. Thanks, Jim, and uh, it's great to be here. As you've all said, you know, we're all experiencing something that's been unprecedented. And so Clinton is 1.3 square miles, 2,700 residents. I have um, a water utility and a sewer utility, as well as the town. We have about 35 employees. Everyone does multiple jobs. They're all cross-trained. Um, and, and we're experiencing this, this, some of the same things. Unfortunately, because of the way our communities are set up, we are not we don't qualify for any of the CARES funding. So we were not able to receive any of that. I know that there are quite a few other municipalities similar to us. New Jersey's got 565 towns and each one of us is a unique entity. We've all got our differences, but the commonality is that we're all struggling here. We are all on the front line. I have residents who are struggling daily. I have business owners. Uh, you know, Clinton has a small downtown in Main Street. Most of those shops and restaurants don't have employees. It is the shop owner that works at the store or works in the restaurant. And they've all struggled through this to be able to reopen their doors. You know, we, we've tried to work with them. And obviously, you know, small communities, we rally around one another, but it's still difficult because everyone is suffering. This is not a um, red or blue, you know, Democrat, Republican. This is this is impacting every single one of us. And it doesn't matter um, what you you believe, you know, politically, we are all struggling and we've all come together as communities. The league has been a, a great resource and um, the, the different uh, congressional offices, you know, have hosted calls. The counties have hosted calls. The governor's offices have hosted calls. But we've all relied on one another when questions come up because no one understands the role of mayor other than another mayor. So I think that's really what has kind of kept me motivated through this. Um, you know, as I'm trying to explain to my residents that no one wrote the rule book on how to handle a pandemic. We all know how to handle floods and hurricanes and, and storm damage, but this has been unprecedented. And parents are trying to teach children, their children. They're trying to continue to work their full-time jobs where they have to. And we're all trying to come together as, as communities to help one another. And that has been probably the, like I said, the one thing that's kept me going is that everyone has been there for everyone else through all of the calls, uh, text messages, and conversations to say, you know, this is what we're doing. What do you think? 
how, how are you handling it? Because you're right, we're all experiencing the revenue loss. It's not just this year. We are looking at a next year and possibly 2022 impact to our financial houses within our communities. And that is something that has to be addressed. And we need the state and federal government to help us with that. We're not looking for handouts, but when we lose a revenue source and, and you know, Clinton's revenue source is mostly the property taxes. You know, we have some permitting fees, we have some other small fees, we don't have a parking authority or any of the others. So when I have a prop, I have a, a decrease in revenue, it's because property taxes can't be paid. And that, and I know I'm not the only one, other small towns like Clinton are experiencing some of the same issues. So, you know, working together definitely makes it an easier, but it does not fix the, the financial problems that we're dealing with. And, and we all work really well with very limited resources. Every mayor I've spoken with has, you know, wears multiple hats within their community. So, you know, it, it it's not for a lack of not being there for our communities. So, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, and a few things that I just want to comment on on uh, what uh, Mayor Kovacs was just saying. First of all, it's one hundred percent true. Uh, none of us here on this conference call that you see on the screen right now. Uh, it's not Democrat or Republican. It's uh, mayors serving our communities, all looking, and it's all the same issue. Uh, and uh, we're working together to get this done, as we always have here at the league. It's never been um, a Democrat Republican issue here. It's always been us working together. I've had calls from uh, different friends from around the state. One of them. Uh, he owns a restaurant in both uh, Newark and New Brunswick. Uh, and it's a, a Red's beer, beer Garden. I'll give him a little plug. But it, it, it's a fabulous restaurant, but he has not been able to open uh, because he hasn't, uh, obviously, because of COVID. And he's struggling financially. He's actually quite worried. And uh, hopefully everything is going to uh, work well for him and he's going to be able to stay open. Uh, but we need to work uh, with the businesses in our communities uh, to make sure they can reopen and to make sure each one of our towns uh, are uh, financially secure. There's, uh, we have a conference call later this afternoon with uh, Assembly Speaker uh, Coughlin, and uh, hopefully we're going to be discussing things there on uh, how to proceed and how to move on. Uh, we've had conference calls with Senator Sweeney, uh, with the governor's office, and also we have a weekly mayor's call on Wednesday mornings where we discuss issues, and it has been pretty much right now. Usually we discuss all issues, but for the last few mo uh, months, it's been dedicated towards the COVID. Uh, at this time, though, uh, I would like to open up the uh, floor to any questions anybody has uh, from the outside. Unfortunately, I cannot see the list of attendees. I see there's 23 on the call. I can only see people that are on the screen for some reason in my, in my list. Uh, we also, by the way, we have Mike Sierra uh, on the call. Uh, he's our ex uh, deputy executive director until J June 30th. Uh, he will be taking over the reins as Mike Darcy, who is also on the call, but uh, is not present on the screen. And we also have Lori Buckaloo on the call uh, in case any questions are uh, needed to be responded to from league staff. So at this time, uh, we'll open it up to the floor and uh, how do we proceed as far as taking questions here, Mike? Jim, there's, there's two ways. Uh, we've unmuted all the attendees, so anyone can ask a question, or you could put it into the question box as well. Okay, at this time, does anybody have any questions? And everybody is unmuted. Um, please, if we start getting a lot of feedback from your particular mic, uh, can you mute? 
your own microphone as somebody else is talking. And uh, if you do ask a question, please state your name and municipality first before you start talking. There is a question in the question box. Uh, this okay, is from um, Landrigan of Politico. Can you explain what you've been seeking from lawmakers in the front office? What bill specifically are you looking for? Uh, Mayor uh, Mulatch, do you want to? I'm sorry, Jim. Go ahead. I was going to suggest Mayor Kovach. Uh, the the league. Uh, I'll just uh, delete into it. Uh, the league has been advocating for uh, Assembly Bill A thirty nine seventy one and S twenty four seventy five. It has passed the Assembly. Uh, it's pending consideration in the Senate. Uh, this would allow municipalities to offset very limited ability to offset uh, expenses related to COVID nineteen uh, for, uh, for for you know, from bonding purposes. Um, but more specifically, I, 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 I'll, kick, I'll kick it to the mayors. Well, right right now, uh, you are aware that the governor is hoping to bond and receive $5 billion uh, in bonding uh, with an additional $9, million, a $9 billion coming from the federal government um, as a loan, and that would be a total of 14 and I believe uh, four billion of that would go back to municipalities that need any assistance in the local municipalities. Now, I know smaller municipalities such as mine uh, in Hardwick up in Warren County and a number of the surrounding, uh, we do not need to bond at this point. And uh, so we are, looking the the bills that mike just uh proposed and suggested uh differ from what the governor wants to do and uh in the bills that mike sierra just mentioned uh sort of relieves the municipalities uh from having to opt in so we we don't have to support those and pay those back and uh incur the debt services that uh, the governor, that we would occur under the governor's plan. So that is one of them. Uh, but Janice, uh, Mike, or Al Kelly, do you have any comments on that? Or Lori Buckaloo, if uh, you want to jump in, or Mike Darcy, uh, if you don't want to, you want to jump in with that also? But, uh, Jim, I will too. There's, there's also been federal legislation proposed um, you, you, obviously, there's anticipation of a federal care, a fourth uh, you know, uh, federal CARES Act, you know, CARES 4.0, at some point over the summer. Uh, there's also Senator Menendez's uh, Heroes Act, which uh, is obviously uh, get, getting some attention in, in, in Washington as well. And I would add, those um, that legislation would provide funding to towns and counties that don't currently qualify under current cdbg rule right yeah community development block sorry i have to make sure i get the, the acronym correct um for towns that don't qualify under current cdbg we would have the ability to um get some of that funding and i believe it was also it would be used to um replace lost revenue right that's correct Lost revenue due to COVID. None, none of this, right. uh, all, all, all the bonding, we can't just bond and use it for anything except for expenses from COVID. Um, and like uh, Mayor uh, Kovac said before, we had an, uh, Hunterdon County, Warren County, and Sussex County all had issues as well. I think there were a total of 11 counties, I'm not mistaken. I can name the three up here. Uh, that didn't receive any money from the first round of CARES. And, uh, you know, there are a number of municipalities that do need assistance from that, uh, not just municipalities, but the counties themselves. And uh, we are looking, still hoping to recover some money 
from that, I, I know the governor's office also, uh, there's $15 million, I believe it is, that uh, is still in the coffers there that we're hoping somehow to collect some revenue from that to help the municipalities. And uh, I'm not sure if that answered the question. Oh, but, yeah, uh, thank you. Jim, yeah. if I can, I, I, I need to correct myself. I got my acronyms uh, mixed. Senator Menendez's proposal, uh, which is direct aid to, to local governments to the set of 250 million, is actually the SMART Act. I referenced a, a House bill. Uh, my apologies, the acronyms run together. Uh, but but uh, we're very supportive of, of you know, what Senator Menendez has done. It's been joined. By, by most of the New Jersey congressional delegation, and, and it's the Heroes Act. I'm Thank sorry, you. the Smart Act. Can you guys? Oh, right. can you guys hear me? The Smart Act. This is uh, Catherine. Um, thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify um, the 15 million dollars that you just referenced. Is that is that leftover money from the Feds from from the CARES Act? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm told, and that's what I've read. Um, can you believe everything you read on the internet anymore? Uh, Abraham Lincoln said, you know, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. So, um, but, you know, I've read so much, seen so many different things, but I am told, yes, there supposedly is a, a $15 million that still is uh, from the CARES Act, I believe, that uh, hasn't been sent out to the municipalities or the counties that's still there that can be used. Now, I don't know if that's fact. Uh, that's what I've heard and been told. So uh, I have not heard that from the governor's office directly, though. Got it. And then can you also just go into, uh, you mentioned the differences between the governor's bonding plan and uh, the bill that's currently, that that the Senate is hasn't moved on yet. Can you just explain again the what the benefit would be for municipalities? Uh, the just the difference between I, the two. I will let Mike speak to that in a second. Uh, I know a lot of it has to do with bonding rates uh, because municipalities, if uh, municipalities were allowed to uh, bond themselves if needed, uh, our rates that we can get are much better than what the state can get. I think that's one of the number one priorities uh, and purposes of it. Uh, but secondly, also, that also relieves um, the municipalities from, you know, if they bond themselves, they pay back their own bonds. So we don't have to worry. If, I don't have to worry about what Mayor Kelly bonds or mm. uh, Mayor Venezia bonds, or they don't have to worry about what I bond. We're responsible for our own debt. Um, but with that, uh, anybody else want to address that issue? Sure, I, I, I can, um, Jim. Uh, just so it's clear, we don't see these two proposals as competing proposals. Um, and, and, and in fact, they, they might be complementary. Uh, you know, we, we, we have focused on, on giving the tools to, to local governments, and, 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 and the league president, I, I think, is correct. And one, one of the chief advantages is we see of, of 3971 S2475, which you know, we call the car bill, is that it gives flexibility to, to, to local governments. Uh, in some cases, uh, you know, because of bond, the bond ratings, the local government is, 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 is going to be able to go to the market and get a better rate than the state, which, which is advantageous to, to, to everyone, to all the taxpayers. So you know, it, whatever shortfall we might see in, in the state bonding proposal, we think is addressed in the separate legislation, which is uh, which is sponsored by Senator Singleton um, and and, and uh, Senator Scatari and then Senator uh, Gopal in, in in the Senate, uh, because it, it gives the more of a flexibility to go town by town. Not every town necessarily would need to borrow, um, and most towns don't want to borrow, but it's a narrow tool that might allow them over the, over the short term to to address the. What I think um, Mayor Kelly had, you know, called revenue, revenue starvation, and that's that's exactly what local governments are facing at the moment. Thank you. Okay, is there any, and thank you for that question. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments? 
Hi, yes, I do. This is Mike Simons from New Jersey 101.5. Wanted to ask about something that Mayor Venezia had addressed, which was property tax collection rates in the in, in May. I was wondering if there were any other numbers about how that went, um, either from the individual mayors or if the league has any of that kind of data. Uh, as far as the town, of, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. I, I, you know, obviously, I can speak to the town of Clinton, and um, we were less concerned with second quarter tax collection. While we're down a little bit, we're more concerned about the third quarter tax collection. Um, you know, the banks escrow, so the banks were paying the taxes for the second quarter. It will be the third quarter where if people haven't made their mortgage payments or if they're not able to make their tax payments that we expect to see more of an impact to our collection rate, at least in the town of Clinton. And that's the same way uh, here in Hardwick. Uh, for the second quarter, our tax collection rate was actually quite good, uh, quite normal. Uh, we are expecting a little bit of a hit on the third quarter for the same reason uh, Mayor Kovach mentioned, um, you know, one of the problems, again, getting back to the collection and is the way that it was introduced and just announced to the people that, okay, we're extending the uh, uh, late charges and fees and then expecting all the municipalities to follow through. A lot of the people within the municipalities saw that the governor ordered that and just expected, oh, we don't have to pay our taxes. Uh, you know, we have, we're getting late fees resolved or uh, pushed off a little bit. Fortunately, in Hardwick, uh, we got the word out as quick as possible through social media, and uh, people understood. Well, for the most part, we did have some people calling up questioning, oh, we were told we didn't have to pay our taxes yet. Um, it sort of wasn't handled in the best way, and it's something that uh, hopefully is clarified better for any upcoming payments that need to be made for the third quarter. And I'm not sure if uh, any of the other towns had problems with that or residents complaining, but I know in Hardwick we had a few, so. Um, uh, Mayor, well, I can Go ahead. I'll just address that. I mean. I will look at it from the other perspective is that I did have some residents that that needed to have a little bit of a delay and not being able to rebate uh, interest is difficult. So having that ability to give them the, the few extra days made all the difference. And again, you know, I, I think the issue becomes more around the third quarter and third and fourth quarter to collection and how we're going to uh, address that, you know. The ability for municipalities to have that flexibility, I think, is a positive. I understand communities that, that struggled with it and didn't have the flexibility. But for those of us that, you know, wanted to be able to offer offer our citizens something, it was a, an opportunity. Yeah, just following up with uh, Mayor Kovach said it, you know, you wanted to be, you wanted to give your residents, you know, as much flexibility as possible. But also on the back end, you know, you have bills to pay by the 15th of the month. Um, we're, we're really concerned about the third and fourth quarter. Um, hopefully it's not too much of a hit, but the second quarter wasn't as bad as we initially thought it was going to be. But the third quarter, we're, uh, we're hoping and we're not going to extend the, de the deadline of August 1st. We're going to keep it at August 1st in Bloomfield. And we're we are doing the same thing here in Bridgeton. Our our collection rate was higher than we anticipated, but as you said, the third quarter is what we're really looking at and uh, planning for, so that we can uh, do what we have to do. But we gave our residents some uh, grace so that they could pay their taxes, and uh, it has been working thus far. This just shows, <clears throat> obviously, the uncertainty and what we're dealing with with this virus. Uh, again, we talked about other problems we've had in the past, such as Hurricane Sandy or Irene or, you know, a storm-type things. You know, this is a financial issue that 
uh, the state's never gone through before. Uh, we're working as hard as we can to get these things uh, resolved. Uh, we want to work with our residents as much as possible to help them out, and I'm sure all the towns are doing so on their individual basis. Um, the one thing, again, that's concerning, and when we talk about bills we have to pay by the 15th, the main one is to the schools. Uh, we collect the taxes not only for each one of our municipalities, but we're collecting the taxes for the schools. That's one of the things the league has been asking for in the past is to uh, some kind of bill coming up down the future, uh, down the pipe to take that away from us. So uh, we're only collecting for the municipality, so we don't have to collect for the schools, and then we don't have to worry about uh, then, you know, the schools collect their own taxes or who, however it might go. And, uh, you know, we're not on the hook for school taxes. So if we don't get the income coming in, then we don't have money to pay the school taxes. But by, yet by state law, it says we have to. So then we have to go out and bond ourselves just to pay, um, you know, the school taxes and make sure we get the money to the schools. So uh, these are some of the you know, issues that we're going through on the uh, tax part. So uh, uh, did that help and answer the questions or is there still a part of the question that's left unopened? Uh, I appreciate it. That was great. Uh, I saw Mike at one point raised his hand. I didn't know if he had something to add. Oh, no, I was just noting we have uh, we have someone someone else raising their hand. So when we'll, uh, we we can move on if 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 this question's been asked or asked and answered. Yep. Thank you very much, all. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Michelle is has her has raised her hand. Michelle Brunetti. Michelle, are you muted? You're unmuted, Michelle. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Oh, great. Um, yeah, I just, this question is more uh, a fairness issue, I guess. Why, with so many people suffering in the private sector, so many businesses, so many people unemployed, why shouldn't municipalities have to cut back a bit in, in during this crisis and for a little while going forward? Why should municipalities want to just continue or expect to continue business as usual with such a major crisis? I'm not uh, really sure how all municipalities I know have cut back and uh, many of the larger towns, or not even larger towns, mid to larger towns have furloughed employees and have cut back. Um, I'm not sure as far as cutting back uh, what you mean. I know our town hall has been shut down. Uh, the clerk goes in. Nobody else is allowed at the town hall. Uh, they can leave right. stuff at the but, front. But, uh, but employees were still paid and everything, right? I mean, like the Bloomfield mayor was saying that he would have to cut 5% of his workforce if certain revenues aren't made up. Like, why not cut 5% of your workforce to, to, to ease up on the burden of taxpayers who are essentially going to pay the whatever the state and federal government comes up with in the long run. And my understanding is many municipalities throughout the state have done that. Some have, some haven't. Um, I'm in a very small town. I have two full-time employees and they're two road workers. Uh, road workers are pretty much essential. Uh, they, you know, we can't follow them. There's always mm -hmm. uh, road work that needs to be done. Um, but, however, as far as uh, uh, other municipalities uh, with police departments or much larger DPWs, I don't know, uh, maybe Al Kelly uh, could speak, speak to that or, a little or the, bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd be happy to. The people, we, our largest part of our budget is of police and fire and we deem those as essential workers and essential needs for our community. And so there was no opportunity 
for us to cut back there because they were needed more, now more than ever. Uh, that's part of the problem that we're facing. Uh, local services are now are needed now more than ever, and uh, those who would be on the front line of being losing jobs or being cut are those who we need more uh, right now. EMTs, uh, firefighters, they are the ones who are going to be laid off and we need their help to, uh, to deliver the essential services uh, in our community. So we're, we're not, uh, we're taking every, looking at every position in our, our community and looking to see it, what is essential, what is not essential so that we do not burden our taxpayers with any any non-essential positions, but uh, the people who are in the crosshairs of being laid off are our essential workers, first line workers. Um, I, I see, would I think- the, Would the Bloomfield mayor mind uh, addressing yeah. that? You know, I, I'm in a similar spot as Mayor Kelly is where the largest part of our budget is, we are is the police department, we have a paid fire department and our Department of Public Works. And those are very much essential employees. And, you know, if we do need to cut them, the residents are the ones that are going to be hurt from it. You know, less police, less fire. You know, our fire department is from 20 years ago is down 30, 30 uh, individuals. Our police department from t 12 years ago is down 10 individuals. So we have made cuts. Um, and you know, we are going to look at every employee, you know, one thing the pandemic has opened up is we are going to look at every employee to see what we do need and what we don't need. But, you know, the revenue, a revenue of $3 million in Bloomfield, the revenue loss is, you know, that's going to equate to less police and less firefighters and DPW that take care of the parks for our kids and stuff like that. So um, the revenue loss is very crucial and some of it, or if not all of it needs to be made up. And, and just uh, to add, just to add, so add one thing, we work, I, I mean, our, we have lean staffs. Most of the municipalities in this state do not, um, you know, we have, as I said, I have my DPW are cross-trained in our water utility and our sewer utility. My office staff do have multiple roles. So, you know, from our perspective, we've cut non-essential spending. So, you know, any of the projects that were the nice to have projects, we've not done any, but our essential services are our garbage pickup, road cleaning, brush pickup, everything that, you know, residents really are, are looking to have. And keep in mind that the taxes we collect in the town of Clinton, only 25% of the taxes actually stay in the town. You know, my budget's under a $4 million budget for the year. So we work relatively lean already. And that, that comes from, uh, thank you, Janice and Mike and Al, for all uh, the comments. And remember, uh, 2010 and 2011, I forget what year it was, where uh, the states were all put under a 2% cap on our budgets. So at that time, we all started working hard on cutting our budgets to stay under that 2% cap. And uh, over the last eight, nine years, we have greatly reduced our budgets so we can stay under that cap and uh, we can continue to do so year by year. Um, and we are already lean as far as who we have working. Uh, you know, if there can be any more cuts, uh, I'm sure, you know, what we would have to do uh, here in Hardwick, at least, we'd have to start cutting road workers, uh, and we only have two. And by state law, you can't have just one, because if they're out uh, using machinery, if we have a tree down on the road, there has to, by uh, law, there has to be two people there when somebody's using a chainsaw. So, you know, you, sometimes you're limited on who you can uh cut and who you can't by law and then also you know by what we need here in the towns to make them work safely uh for each one of our towns uh mike sira did you have something you wanted to say uh well you, you all said it probably better than 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 i could i 
I, I think, but you, the, the point is, you know, since the two, you know, the 2000, the, the impact of the 2008 recession, Hurricane Sandy, the interest arbitration cap, uh, municipal governments are, are particularly lean, you know, efficient operations already. Uh, and the, there hasn't been regrowth from, 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 from all those cuts. And statewide, the municipal portion of the property taxes, you know, you know, averaging around 40%. So <clears throat> when you look at essential services like police and fire and and, and health officers in, 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 in the current circumstances and public works, uh, you know, the, they've already been cut probably pr pretty bare bone. And and uh, I think all the mayors said that, you you know, sp speaking from, from their own experiences. Um, to me right Perry, now, go ahead, one sorry. Thing, one thing that we have, we had done in Bridgeton and we continue to do is shared service agreements with the municipalities and the, the county. Right. Uh, in our city right now, to try to keep everything as low as possible, we have over 30 shared service agreements uh, in place at this moment. And so we're trying to do our best to leverage what we have with those municipalities that surround us so that we can uh, give our community the service that they demand, but also at a affordable tax rate. And that's a good point, uh, Mayor Kelly, and that's one of the reasons why it is um, more important now more than ever to continue with the shared service agreements that we have with other municipalities, not only now but into the future. And uh, municipalities have to realize also uh, shared services don't always have to be to a town right next to you. Um, there are different shared services that could possibly be spread, you know, with communities, uh, maybe even a county or two away. Um, uh, the one essential service to me right now that we need, uh, seeing me on camera here especially, is I got to get my hair cut. We need to get that open as soon as possible. Uh, I know they opened yesterday, but uh, I haven't been able to get there. But anyway, um, did that answer? I think it was Michelle that asked that question. Yes, thank you very much. Did that did that uh, answer your question, or is there? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank right. you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't see any other questions in the question box, and I don't see any other raised hands. But before we move on, I just want to give everyone a. Uh, one last chance in case of what I'm missing anything. I or guess not. Is there any, I'll go back or to you. Is any, any league staff that wants to make any comments that might be on the call. Uh, Mike Darcy, uh, Lori Buckaloo. Um, I, I also, I'll, I'll take this last opportunity though, uh, seeing the date as the 23rd. Uh, for anybody on this uh, call, um, our great executive director, Mike Darcy, is retiring at the end of the month on June 30th. Jim? Somebody muted me. By, okay, somebody said I was muted by the organizer. Uh, maybe they don't want me saying anything. <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry, I, I hit the wrong uh, button. Sorry, I'm new. I'm new. I'm new to this. Uh, no, but I just wanted to thank Mike Darcy, who's retiring at the end of this month, uh, for all his time as uh, at the League of Municipalities for 30 years, and uh, for yeah, bring him in the camera there with you, Mike. There, is. there he is, Mike Darcy, uh, for all his time that he's put in. Uh, he's retiring at the end of the month, and I wish him all the uh, luck and not luck, but uh, I'll take luck. Continued success in the future as he's sitting down at the river fishing, and uh, uh, you've been a great asset act asset to this organization as well as to the municipalities across the state. And I want to thank you very much for your time. And, uh, you know, congratulations. 
Thank uh, you, Jim. You're welcome. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, no, I appreciate everybody getting on the call. Um, this this story is an ongoing event. Uh, it has a federal component, it has a state component, and it absolutely has a local component. Uh, so I appreciate uh, the media picking up this story and keeping it front and center. Thank you. And uh, just in case anybody hasn't heard, uh, again, he has retiring. Mike Sierra is moving up into the number one spot, what we call the number one spot as the executive director. And Lori Buckler, who's also, uh, I'm sure, in the office there, is moving up into the, uh, uh, what are we calling the position, the deputy executive director or assistant deputy director yep. spot. And uh, we are moving on with the transition here at the league, and uh, things are going smoothly. And uh, with that, if there's no more questions, are you seeing any last-minute questions there, Mike? I do not. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the panelists, uh, Janice, Al, uh, Mike, uh, all for joining us and speaking and uh, with all the comments and what we're doing here. And uh, I believe a copy of this will be left on the league's website for people to review at a, a future date if they want to come back to anything that they've heard or seen. And uh, with that, thank you all for coming and joining the call. And uh, I will talk to you all soon.